Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the Android guy. Hey guys, today I'm doing another benchmark test for the Galaxy Tab 4 7.0. So first of all, let's see what's in this device. So this is a quad-core 1.2 gigahertz, uh, which translates to about 1.18 of actually being used. And the important thing to note here is the graphics card. The graphics card is lower compared to the Tab 4 8.0 and 10.1. Um, in terms of everything else though, it's pretty much similar. You do have Android 4.4 KitKat on board. You do have a 720p resolution of 1280 by 800 and your RAM is 1.5 gigs. Uh, the important part of course is the Wi-Fi model only has eight gigs built in, meaning you only get about 4.7 uh, available to you. And after just installing really very, very small apps, I only have about 3.06 on board. Uh, now this is because of the built-in apps doing updates as well as just anything else you might download along the way. So how does this compare in benchmark results? Well, let's see. So first of all, we ran an Antutu test where it did a good job, not necessarily amazing, but let's see how it ranked. Uh, so when we go to the bar graph down here, we can see that it's above, oops, let me zoom out a little bit for you. It's above the S2, but still below the Nexus 4, so, and the S3. So these are devices that are now two years old and uh, this one is lower than it. So it's not gonna be the uh, best overall, which again, and Tutu does a good job of doing overall processor power, everything, um, you kind of see how it does. So um, in terms of that, it does an okay job, but just not ideal for the most part of how everything uh, works on the device in terms of speed for um, the fast user. But again, a good job. Now, when we checked out the processor itself and only the processor, we could see that it pretty much falls in the same kind of category, that it's under the Nexus 4, and um, above the HTC Desire, uh, but still again, below that Nexus 4 mount um, and definitely above, below the S4 range and other devices out there. So it's definitely going to be lower. And then on the graphics side, again, we see a little bit of a difference on here. Ran each test on it and um, overall it basically uh, did okay, but nothing fancy on the graphics card again because this is a very low low graphics card So if we go under the extreme it did a 15 530 Which just so you can see of um, you know other devices out there other devices can max this out and It's just it's not very um, high up there on the performance range and again, so if we see let's see Go just for the middle one, extreme. And let's just go Android so we don't have all the Windows devices in there. Or I guess that filters out. So now that we only have Android devices, just so we can see, a lot of these devices max out nowadays. Um, and even older devices like, um, well, it's like the transformer there, but let's see what's the oldest device we can go as we go to a thousand five hundred. Um, we have the Sony, we have the S4 right there. You can see 6,800 compared to the thousand five hundred it gives you. So you can see in terms of benchmarks, this isn't really impressive, especially on the graphics portion, and that's what holds it back the most. But for everyday users, it might be just enough. What are your thoughts on the benchmark test for it? Do you have any questions about how it compares to other tablets on the market? If you do, leave me comments down below. Thank you for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the Android guy.